everybody, I'm Lates Camera Jackson. It's Sunday, September 23rd, 2018. Welcome to an all new episode of LCJ Live. It is officially fall and it's getting a lot colder. That's why I got my man SpongeBob right here. Oh, brr, shivered. But that's because he'll also be having new episodes this week. And Smallfoot about the Yeti is coming out this week as well. So a lot of cold themes, even though we also still have the sharks of the Meg behind us because the Meg is still making money. Welcome to the show. We got a lot to talk about today. I'm going to name my favorite Kevin Hart movies because Night School, his latest comedy, co-starring Tiffany Haddish, opens up on Thursday night at 7 p.m. We'll talk about that. I'll give my predictions for how much money that'll make along with Smallfoot. We'll see how it does. Yet another Warner Brothers animated movie. We had Teen Titans Go in July, now Smallfoot in September. We'll see how the studio does. But we're going to get right into the box office, though, as always, please, if you'd like to uh, comment, you got any questions, you saw any movies over the weekend, uh, I've seen a couple in the last few days playing a little catch-up, A Simple Favor and Science Fair, uh, a new documentary. Uh, I'll talk about those in just a little bit. Please send in your comments and questions, especially if you're on Twitter or Periscope right now, and I will read them and answer them live here on the air on LCJ Live. So, it's box office time. The house with a clock in its walls. An easy victory for the weekend, $26.9 million. That is significantly higher than I think I estimated and Universal initially thought because of Saturday's box office. So the movie started out and made about 850000 on Thursday, made another $7 million on Friday, jumped all the way up to $11.5 million yesterday, which is huge, and then another $7.5 million estimated for today. At Annie underscore 2016 saying, Hi, what's up, Annie? How you doing? What's your favorite movie of the summer? Says, Hello, Abby. Uh, I'm going to go with Christopher Robin, which is still playing in some theaters. I absolutely love that movie. It is emotional. It is deep. And it's close to $100 million right now total at the box office, which is higher than I think Disney thought it was going to make. So if you haven't seen Christopher Robin and it's playing in a theater near you, please go see Christopher Robin. I want to see Assassination Nation, says at Bob Hall. Yeah, this was a weird little indie movie opened up uh, in 1,400 theaters from Neon this weekend. Assassination Nation only made a million bucks, so it didn't do all that well, but if you're interested in it, maybe you should take a chance on it. I have not seen Assassination Nation yet. Uh, that's a real tongue twister right there. But we'll see. Maybe I'll get a screener of it uh, later on in awards season. In second place uh, this weekend, jumping up from third last weekend, A Simple Favor, the dramatic thriller mystery with Anna Kendrick, Blake Lively, and Henry Golding from Crazy Rich Asians with $10.4 million. I caught up on A Simple Favor on Friday. I think the first half is pretty decent. It's a good setup. The three of them are pretty good, and it feels young, it feels contemporary, and it gets you in the, the frame of mind. But there's a major twist halfway through, and then a heck of a climax that's just way too overkill, so I was ended up being disappointed by a simple favor. Uh, I expected it to be real juicy throughout, intriguing, and you just don't get enough of that. So too bad about a simple favor, but it is making money. In third, The Nun. The horror movie, $10.3 million. It has crossed the $100 million mark this weekend. The Predator, huge drop to fourth place. 65% drop with $8.7 million. And Henry Golding, also in Crazy Rich Asians, $6.5 million to come in fifth place. That is impressive these days uh, to see a star be in two of the top five movies in America. That is really impressive. Hello, Abby. Least favorite movie of the summer. I hated Tag. Tag was so unfunny. Uh, at Bob Hall says the Mary Poppins trailer lived up to the hype. Yes, it did. Mary Poppins Returns looks awesome. And Blake Lively, he thought, is great in A Simple Favor. If you need a Blake Lively movie uh, you want to check out, please see The Age of Adeline. It's a film that came out in 2015 with her and Harrison Ford. I think it's a very good movie. I liked it. I remember liking it when it came out. And the more I thought about it afterwards, the more I, I appreciated it. I actually want to catch it again if it's on TV someday. The Age of Adeline is a good movie. Malcolm underscore Xbox says Tag was the worst. Yes. Bravo, Malcolm. It was absolutely terrible. Offensive. I hated that movie. I don't care if it was based on a true story. It was ridiculously unfunny. Yes. Tag was terrible. Let's go through 6 through 10. At the box office, White Boy Rick, $5 bucks. 
you still haven't seen White Boy Rick, I think McConaughey deserves to be in the supporting actor conversation, so please see that. Peppermint in 7th with 3.7 million. Fahrenheit 11.9, Michael Moore's latest movie where he goes after Trump and more. $3.1 million to come in 8th. I had a feeling this movie wasn't going to do well. Because nobody cares about spending three hours of their life uh, in a theater, p spending $20 at least, to see all this p political opinion commentary when you can get it online and on TV every single day on various channels. So, yeah, Fahrenheit 11.9 bombed this weekend. But another movie did worse than that. We'll get to that in a second. The Meg, ninth place, $2.4 million, and Searching uh, rounds out your top ten with another $2.2 million. Okay, let's talk about this movie life itself. I saw it last Monday at an early advanced screening. Um, and I actually went with my mother because she likes This Is Us. And I got a lot of people who went to the free screenings and, or who went to see it this weekend, either with their mother or just as themselves, uh, were fans of This Is Us. Because this is from the uh, creator of the show, Dan Fogelman. He wrote and directed this movie, Life Itself. It is a bunch of different stories come together based on one single event, which is sort of what This Is Us is as well. But there's some really odd elements to this movie. The opening scene of life itself, and I won't give it away uh, in case you do somehow want to go see this movie, but it's just bizarre as heck. Uh, I do think the second half is much better than the first half, but it's still not a great movie by any means. Dan Fogelman came out with a statement the other day basically saying, I blame white male movie critics for, for not getting and understanding and appreciating any kinds of movies with emotion for the negative reviews of life itself. He blamed white male movie critics. First of all, number one, he's a white male guy. Number two, female film critics, African-American film critics, film critics of all colors, shapes, creeds, all of that, didn't like your movie. The majority of them didn't like your, their, your movie. Came out with statements saying your movie just wasn't good. It has nothing to do with us not appreciating emotion. It's the fact that your movie just wasn't good enough. And that was this case. Now, I appreciated some of the elements, especially in the second half. There are a couple strong scenes where you get that emotional aspect of life itself. But overall, it's got some major problems. Your film just doesn't work. Don't go blaming other people when you're the one that caused the problem. When you're the one, your product just wasn't good enough. That's really cheap. Uh, you know, I like your TV series, Dan Fogelman. I like This Is Us because the melodrama is sophisticated enough and works enough with the performances, but it was way too much in this movie. We get emotion. White male movie critics, all kinds of movie critics understand and appreciate emotion. We just didn't appreciate your movie. So there you go. Uh, Bob Hall says Terrence, uh, life itself looked like a Terrence Malick ripoff. Yeah, I get that a little bit. You know, I wasn't a huge fan of The Tree of Life from several years ago. And I actually wasn't a huge fan of this movie, To the Wonder. Remember that Terrence Malick movie? One of the best movie trailers of the past ten years, To the Wonder. But a real disappointing movie. So yeah, you could say Life Itself had some of that. And again, Life Itself, by the way, has nothing to do with the 2014 Life Itself movie, which was the uh, look at Roger Ebert's life. So again, there you go, uh, Dan Fogelman. Why did you have to title your original movie... The same title as a film that came out four years ago about the most prolific film critic of all time. Look at that. It's like payback. That movie called Life Itself was about a film critic, and all the film critics hate your movie. Boom! Payback. There you go. So, yeah. Life Itself ended up coming in 11th place this weekend with just $2.1 million. Largely, probably, because of the negative reviews. There you go. There's my take on that whole situation involving Life Itself. I do want to mention... A couple other new movies that opened up this weekend, Colette with Kira Knightley and The Sisters Brothers with John C. Riley and Joaquin Phoenix had some strong limited release openings in just four theaters. And please check out this National Geographic new documentary I watched last night called Science Fair. It is not only one of the best documentaries of the year, but it's one of the best movies of the year, period. I could watch it again and again. It's about all these kids competing to for spots in ICEF, which is this international science competition uh, for students that takes place in Los Angeles every year. And uh, it is a fantastic documentary. It'll make you think. It'll make you laugh. It'll get you emotionally invested in these kids in and out in 90 minutes. And it is fantastic. So please check out Science Fair. It had another strong weekend this weekend at the box office. All right. If you're just joining us here on LCJ Live, House with a Clock in its Walls is number one. We're now going to talk about uh, some of the movies opening up for this coming week. 
including Night School, the new comedy with Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish. I don't know. I feel like I'm going to need earplugs if I go see this movie because they are two of the loudest comedians on the planet. They're just going to be, ah, ah, they're just going to be screaming at each other through this whole movie. I can feel it. But I do like a lot of Kevin Hart's, but not a lot of Kevin Hart's movies. It depends on the role and it depends on the performance. Let's go through some of my favorite Kevin Hart performances and movies and you guys can chime in uh, with your favorite Kevin Hart movies as well. I'm going to start with a small role he had, but a memorable role he had in Death at a Funeral. The 2010 comedy with Chris Rock, Martin Lawrence, Tracy Morgan, Danny Glover. The cast was great. Really, one of the funniest comedies of the last 10 years. And Kevin Hart has a very small role early on, and he is hilarious in that movie. Death at a Funeral is one of my favorites. So then Kevin Hart started building up his momentum a little bit to superstardom. He started getting out those... Uh, documentaries, those stand-up concert specials, if you want to call them that, in the movie theaters. Then he had a supporting role in Grudge Match from 2013, which I think is one of the most underappreciated comedies in recent years. It was Stallone, Rocky Balboa, and De Niro, Raging Bull, in the ring together, along with Kevin Hart, Alan Arkin, and Kim Basinger. Wow! This was a great movie, a fun movie from the director of Get Smart, Peter Siegel, and a really entertaining film. It got way overshadowed by so many other movies out during that time, including Anchorman 2, Saving Mr. Banks, American Hustle, and The Wolf of Wall Street. It really overshadowed to the point where Grudge Match only made $30 million. That should not have happened. Grudge Match is one of my favorite movies featuring Kevin Hart. Uh, also, The Wedding Ringer, uh, when he teamed up with Josh Gad. I remember seeing this movie in L.A. Uh, during a Critics' Choice Awards so was screening that week and laughing a lot. It's a funny movie. It's a calm movie and compared to a lot of his other ones, but it's a good concept, and the pairing of him and Josh Gad uh, is really great. At Bob Hall and uh, at Squirm Nodia says, I loved Soul Plane starring Kevin Hart. There you go. There's another one. Soul Plane, people like, from Kevin Hart. He's had some ups and downs. Get Hard, I hated. Uh, Central Intelligence, not my favorite. The Ride Along movies, not my favorite movies in the world. But props to Captain Underpants, the first epic movie. It is a voice performance, but you got to take voice performances seriously. And this movie is seriously funny. It was not specifically made for my demographic. You could have gone younger, you could have gone older, uh, reaching the kids who grew up with Captain Underpants. I was kind of in between. But the jokes aimed at the elementary school vibe and what happens in classrooms and settings and how kids react to things, so spot on. And his voice performance was great. So those are some of my favorite Kevin Hart movies. On the way, of course, is the Jumanji sequel for him and this movie called The Upside with him and Brian Cranston and Nicole Kidman coming out in January. So it's a little bit more of a dramatic movie, they say. So we'll see how Kevin Hart does. I think it's a real box office battle this coming week between Night School and Smallfoot. Because the Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish crowd will go see Night School. I don't think it's going to bomb. I think it's going to make at least $20 million. Smallfoot is a big question mark. Two years ago, Warner Brothers put out an original movie called Storks for animation. Uh, about how storks deliver babies and all that. It only opened to about $22 million, but it ended up making $72 million total. It had some uh, strong uh, several weeks afterwards. The question is, how will yet another original movie with a big cast, LeBron James, Danny DeVito, Channing Tatum, James Corden, Zendaya, how will this one do at the box office? I think Smallfoot's going to win because families need a new big animated movie, but don't count out Night School giving it a run for its money. So I think it's going to be a strong one-two punch next week at the box office between those two movies. So we will definitely see what happens. I'll have my review of Smallfoot later this week. I'm also seeing a couple of documentaries. I put up a new blog piece at lights jacksoncom on the popularity these days of celebrity biography, big name, high profile type documentaries that have been released this year. Whether it's Won't You Be My Neighbor, the Mr. Rogers one, uh, RBG on Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and a few others coming out right now, including a movie I'm seeing today, a new Gilda Radner documentary called Love Gilda, and a film I'm seeing Wednesday night, uh, Joan Jett, Bad Reputation, a docu new documentary on iconic singer Joan Jett. These are the kinds of movies that audiences want to see. And, and they're spending money. The Whitney Houston documentary over the summer as well. These big name documentary celebrity biopic movies. 
Not these political ones like Fahrenheit 11.9. These are the kinds of ones people want to see right now in 2018. Documentaries have felt more mainstream and relevant than ever before. So I'll be having my reviews of Love, Gilda, and Joan Jet Bad Reputation as well later this week at lights-camera-jackson.com. The Film Columbia Festival lineup should also be coming out this week. They're going to have a brand new website uh, with all the information on the latest movies. Fingers crossed they got some good ones. I am hoping that Hugh Jackman's The Front Runner is part of this lineup. I really am, fingers crossed. Want to see that movie and a whole lot of others that are coming out for award season. So keep it tuned to social media, Twitter at LCJ Reviews and more, Facebook as well, for the latest details on the Film Columbia Festival lineup. All right. I think that's it for this week's episode of LCJ Live. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next week live here, Sunday at noon Eastern, when we'll recap Smallfoot and Night School and more. And if you're watching this on YouTube right now, be sure to subscribe and watch the latest video on one of these. And I'm Lights Camera Jackson. I will see you next week. And check out some new SpongeBob's this week. I believe it's 6, 5 Central. See you next Sunday for LCJ Live at noon Eastern.